conceptual Jay sounded better than Jay Preach. People talk Real about talk, it. I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I hope that you guys are having an unbelievable start to your day and a closing out of your week. No matter where you're at, what's going on, whether you are working or you're still on a shelter in uh, place order, uh, whether you're going through a situation where you still have employment or you've been furloughed or laid off, uh, it is not the end of the world. Uh, there is still so much that you can do and so much that you have to offer this world. Uh, you need to recalibrate your observations of self and see you for who you really are in the world and not place yourself against the canvas of external uh, observation, definition, or designation. You're so much bigger than what you're being told or how you're being uh, assessed. I just wanna leave you with that. The reason I'm here is actually to talk about uh, the current state. I told you I was gonna keep you updated on what's going on with the uh, Ahmad uh, Arbery case um, based on a lot of pressure uh, from, from, from blacks, and others being organized and coming together to unite our voices. Uh, some obvious uh, discrepancies in what you can see in the videotape of Aubrey, uh, uh, of uh, Ahmad's murder uh, compared to what we had been told before the video surfaced uh, has led to the arrest of both Gregory and Travis McMichael with them being charged with murder and with uh, aggravated assault. Uh, but we also must remain aware of the fact that we've been down this road before. We have seen uh, those who have killed our young men arrested and then acquitted and set free or char charges dropped. Uh, we need to see this all the way through. We need to make this a priority, but we also must be aware of what we're facing as we live as blacks in this country. Uh, do not buy into the illusion of a new diverse and integrated society. This world has never been more segregated than it is. It's just built in illusions that provide an escape from what the truth really is. Escapism has been our crutch for over a century now. And so I'm challenging you guys to not lose yourself in the illusion, to be aware of what's going on and to be diligent. Young black men, you need to be aware of where you're at and what's going on. Black men in general, we must prepare ourselves to defend ourselves, our women, our children, our families and our communities. We must no longer look outside of ourselves for protection and defense. We must no longer expect those who have oppressed us to become our protectors. It is our responsibility as men to stand up and establish a consequence for erroneous and aggressive actions towards ourselves and our loved ones. It is nobody else's responsibility but ours. We can talk about black group economics. We can talk about healing from trauma. We can talk about the importance of education. We can talk about ending mass incarceration. We can talk about all of the things that I have pointed out along with my colleagues and my ancestors before us. Uh, about what needs to be done uh, in the black community to empower us. But if we don't establish as a race of people, specifically as the male species within the race, that we will not tolerate aggression against our own, 
then we will be the laughing stock of the world. We will be the footstool of the world. We will be those who will be viewed as weak and easy, easy, easy targets. It's going to be us who finally gives valid, uh, validation and gravity to the statement that Black Lives Matter. It's, it, it, it's a mantra with no meaning until you place a consequence and a price on taking a black life. When you place a consequence and a price on taking a black life, you at that point establish without question that black lives matter. When there is no longer the toleration of aggression towards black life, then it will be understood that black lives matter. We can talk, we can rage, we can march, we can do all of that. But at some point, we have to establish a negative con consequence for negative actions. There is no way around it. It is simple. It is, uh, it, it, and it has to be sacred. Um, I, I do want to report that at this time, both men have been arrested, but you can also uh, know that they've already posted bond and are free on bail. So um, there are places you can definitely uh, find uh, their home address. What I want to focus on as I close out here is that we as a people must see the value in who we are ourselves before we can ever expect anyone else or any other group to see it. We cannot search for the validation of who we are in, in the eyesights and designations and tr uh, treatment from and by others. That is not where we will discover ourselves. We will discover ourselves by looking within and researching our history and properly socializing our youth and by visiting the infinite possibilities of what we have the capacity to do. We need to stop begging to be invited to their table and build our own. We must be willing to see the beauty in ourselves and in, in, in our melanin rich selves and, and to understand that our darkness comes with a certain uniqueness and power that we have divorced ourselves from as we attempt to acclimate into their culture, their society, and their system. We aren't built for that. That's not where we belong. That's not who we are. And it's gonna be up to us to truly discover ourselves and see how awesome we are as a people and the richness of our history far beyond and before slavery and how our resilience after slavery again points to the uniqueness of who we are and our capacity and power and resilience to sustain and survive. We are a unique and special people, but we must discover it within ourselves. And when we do, we will stop searching out and hoping someone else sees what is there. And we will simply begin to make our presence felt. We will simply begin to establish who we are without question. We will begin to live in our blackness unapologetically. We will begin to step out and there will be no force on this planet or in this universe that will stop us. It's on us now. We need to hold them accountable. We need to send a message that this is no longer acceptable. We need to send a message that if you can't handle your own, we will. And we must be unapologetically committed to doing said. On that note, I'm going to get ready to check out of here. As I always um, mentioned, don't forget to support the work we do. Go to the description box, look at the first paragraph, and show your love and support for the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project, whether it's research and development, whether it's program development, whether it's uh, the programs we've actually uh, implemented into the black community and so much in the services we offer. 
but show your love and show your support. We need you. On that note, I'm out. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.